Okay, so we sync the audio video with a clap. I want you to clap for me, please. Just perfect. Ready? No, I'll tell you. Welcome to the show, Abhis. Thank you very much, Abhimanyu. I'm, I'm happy to be here. Oh, that's awesome. I have to tell you that you are pure energy. The, the moment <laughs> you say, you know, I've, I've got athletes before yeah. on the show. Fantastic people. But the moment you stepped in, right, it's different. I can feel it right now, you know, that I'm pumped up right now. Like, oh, there's so much to talk. So, first thing that I really, really want to talk to you about is your name. Is yeah. your name. Okay, that's a Parsi name? Yes, it's, it's a Persian Par- name. Persian name. Yeah. So, I was right when I said Parsi name, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah Parsi name. So, here's the thing. Uh, I come from Jammu. So, I'm from Jammu. Right. Not, not. So, cool. You look it. <laughs> <laughs> represent yes. so, <laughs> so here's the thing. people in Jammu aren't exposed to Parsi culture or Parsi people because there aren't any over there right. hardly negligible yeah. they're, yeah. They're, they're, but you're closer is. to the land yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> if you talk about the land the land yeah <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, so uh, we've got uh, like most of the people kids we grew up with so you've got you have Hindu names you've got Muslim names you've got Sadar names yeah. all these names so yeah. you know these and most of them are Hindi derived right yes Sanskrit Hindi yeah. so here the names are so refreshing because <laughs> A they sound nice yeah. right and B you don't even <laughs> you know, know what, what they mean <laughs> yeah it, Vabis, what, what does it mean so Vabis means bestowed by the Lord bestowed by the Lord yeah nice. and my mom actually was very happy that after two sons she had a daughter nice and my godmother, right. who, is, uh, who took care of my mom, not related in any way, but mm. took care of my godmother. mom through her pregnancy. Yeah. And she named me that because she knew how much a girl child meant to my mom. Right. So hence, that that's how where the name came out from. And it's also a very uncommon name in the Parsis. In the Parsis? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I have a friend, her name is, I love Parsi names. Her name is Delara. Yeah. But that's not the cool part about her name. Although I haven't heard Delara ever. Right. The coolest part of her name is that she has a hyphen in her name. Del hyphen Ara. She has a card in hyphen. Hoga. Can you imagine? <laughs> it's crazy, right? I want a hyphen in my name. Like, abhi hyphen <laughs> money. That's so cool. That's why Babis. Babis is such an amazing name. But yeah, talking about names, let's just get to your sports thing. Yeah. I know this thing that sports people and athletes have, uh, whether your opponents or your teammates, yeah. right? They have nicknames. Yes. Do you have one? I want to Yeah. Know. So, my nickname is Bobby. Bobby? Yeah. Why? Why so? We're in the Indian subcontinent. Right. So, uh, there are a lot of uh, parts of the country which cannot pronounce V. Okay. So, V becomes B. Okay. And B remains B. Okay. But you can't say Bobbies. Oh. So, we Bobbies. <laughs> but we had a coach. His name is, we call him Hammer. Hammer. Yeah. Because he looked like this. Okay. And his name is Sandeep. And coach, co- uh, you know, yeah. the coach needs to have a name like that. You can't yeah. call coach a nail, right? Yeah. Because he's never going to be the nail, right? <laughs> yeah. We were the nail. Tracker. Yeah. And he came from Jammu. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. What, what's his name? Sandeep Singh. He used to call you Bobby. He used to call, he one day, he just, we were standing in a group and he says, uh, oh, Bobby, <laughs> me the cow. And we were all like, who is he talking to? I'm like, it's me. So, even his own son, whose name is Bunch, he right. calls him Bunch. Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> He's wild Bunch. So, <laughs> so uh, here's the thing. Uh, if I was your opponent, if I was a girl, a rugby player, and I was your opponent, You'd right? be very attractive. Oh, thank you. That's, right. That's my moment right now. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be a cute girl. <laughs> That's not a nice no, thing. No, no, no. <laughs> right now, it doesn't feel right. No, no. no. <laughs> anyway. I, did you just <laughs> fuck me over right now? For no reason. <laughs> but anyway, let's get back to that. <laughs> so, if I was a girl, and if I was to face you, mm-hmm. I mean, you're a strong girl. Like, even for guys, like you are. Look at those guns, man. I'm not saying that. <laughs> so, I would have named you something like, you know, Wabist or something. Yeah, like, yeah. that's... Do, do people call you that? It, once my uh, union tagged me as that. Wabist. Wabist. See, nice. I'm uh, making sense now. <laughs> so, yeah. sports. How, like why why sports sport has been a part of my life since i've been a child and uh, if you've heard my ted talk mm. over there i've said that i sport was in my blood from the time i was conceived so that's it it literally feels like it started way long that long back you know so when uh, 
after uh, for as long as I can remember. So I can only remember age four, five onwards. Before that, I can't remember yeah. anything. But I always remember dad taking us for outdoor activities. Hmm. It was like inbuilt very young in my age, so it never felt like sport. Right. Karna hai. Right. Yeah. 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 It's like you wake up in the morning and brush your teeth, huh. or maybe you don't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the that's the thing, right? It's 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 routine. It's not like brushing your teeth. Mm. So how is it like? You know, it was never so. It's the same thing. It was never a different thing for me. Right. My parents already decided which side of the school I was going to. So the, okay. our school is a combination of primary. And then in senior, hmm. you can choose to go to girls, boys, or coed. So right. I'm from Dastur school. Right. Everything is in the same block. Coed, you so, yeah, yeah. So yeah. my parents knew that I'm going there because both of my brothers were there. Right. And uh, the sports coach there, his name is Sanjay Kable. Hmm. He spotted me very early. So right. because it was all on the same ground, we shared right. the ground. Right. And he asked the primary school PT coach that, who is this highly active child? Hmm. And uh, that guy said, Are, Please take her under your, you know, training. You, you, she, she should go with you. And I remember the time when my brothers had to wake up a bit earlier than me because right. senior school starts yeah, a bit yeah. earlier, and I used to totally take their case. Sure, you know, I right? understand. Yeah, yeah. I've not done that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to wake up at eight o'clock. I have to wake up at nine o'clock, kind of thing. And when Sanjay sir spoke to my eldest brother, uh-huh. he said, "Send your sister to my training," right. which meant I have to wake up that early as well. Yeah. And I hated the concept. I was like, I am not waking up earlier than my brothers. I have just taken their case. Yeah. And my parents were sold. Right. Like, no, you have to go. So has called you. I mean, huh. if someone is calling you for something, it's but respectful to go right. and just try it out. Yeah. And I used to make all the sorts of reasons that, no, mama, I'm shy to change yeah. uh, into my, I'm shy to wear non-uniform clothes on training. And, you know, I have to make all the reasons. My shoes will get dirty. Teacher will <laughs> shout. These are all excuses. These are all my excuses. Right. And I didn't want to say that I don't want to wake up right. early. But my final straw was that, that yeah. you know, if they don't listen to anything else, I will say that. And then both my parents sat me down and said, see, what are you doing in years in the morning? Mm. And how early do you go to sleep? Mm. So you're getting your sleep. Yeah. Okay. So just let's, let's start waking up a little bit early. So I was like, you know what? Fine. It's smart parenting. Very smart yes. parenting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so initially it was all run rounds. Yeah. 10 rounds and yeah. then go. To your school. Hmm. I was like, oh, this is simple, it's not too <laughs> much effort. Yeah. And the boys' school hockey coach was training the the boys right. for some hockey tournament. And uh, he goes up to Sanjay sir and says, uh, Aapke student hai? Uh. And he's like, Haan, kyun, kya hua? Nahin, mere boys ke race laga. Uh. Just, I don't know what got yeah. into him. And uh, Sanjay sir goes, Haan, shit, hai. Bawa, And I was like, Haan, oh, oh, oh. So I was calling Chalo, no, no, no. And uh, I ran over and he's like, uh, Baba bhagne ka hai, bahar se hi tak. He didn't tell me it's a race, he didn't tell me anything. When I stood in line and I saw these boys with their hockey stick, yeah. I was like, oh, this is like a race. Huh. I'm like, okay, chalo, we'll race. And uh, I left that boy school coach jaw dropped. By miles. <laughs> Did you win by miles? Not by miles, but I was just, I was enjoying that run. You yeah. Know? I was just when I was running, I was a bit intimidated that, you know, these boys with sticks are running and, you know, they're much older than me. Okay. And I'm like, but wait, I'm ahead of all of them. Right. <laughs> and that's something that was my carrot at the end of the stick mm, for right. me. Yeah. And then I was like, you know what, maybe I need to take this next level. Mm. So this, this is how my journey began. And then when I was uh, 12, 13 huh. is when uh, I got introduced to handball. Handball. Now, handball right. also happened in a very... Organic way. Okay. Got selected for playing for the state. Right. Played nationals. Mm. Got a medal on the national front. Also, got selected to play for India, but funds didn't okay. enable that team but to that, get formed. But that's, that's sad. But that was awesome. That yeah. Year. I was like, after this, what am I going to play? Mm. I don't know any club that plays handball. There are football clubs and there are crit- cricket clubs around. And then there are wrestling clubs right. around. Do you wrestle? I did for six months. I think you'll do amazing if you still start. If, you <laughs> I, know, after rugby, if you switch to MMA. Mm, just saying, yeah. just saying. I think you will take part. <laughs> I'm not lying. You should think about it. I will. I, I'll be I'll one of your think about it. first promoters. <laughs> yeah. It was October, November, I remember. And these two gentlemen come to our school okay. to promote rugby. Right. And he's like... This is Surat Khare and with him was Hammer sir. Okay. And this is Sandeep sir. 
and this is Babi, this is Neha. Right. And like now you all coordinate and hmm. have fun. That's it. And yeah, <laughs> he was like very gentle, gentleman. Okay. Uh, uh, I, 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 I'm Ansur Khare uh, uh, and uh, we run a rugby <laughs> club in Pune and I was like wow rugby uh, I knew what rugby was yeah. but I've never heard of it being in Pune or yeah. being in India yeah. I knew there was a men's team mm. because we had had a short stint with you know just chucking the ball around yeah, and right, stuff right. like that so I was like wow rugby and he said yeah, yeah we have quite a lovely women's team uh, uh, why don't you uh, why don't you uh, uh, get your friends around to watch a friendly that we're having in right. a part of the city. I said, oh, no, why not? Uh, so when rugby got introduced to me and I'm just like, oh shit, I have to, is this a wrestling on uh, a field, yeah. you know? So I was like, I don't know if I want to, you know, tackle somebody, mm. and, you know, drop them to the ground and yeah. all of that. And uh, all these thoughts are running in my mind. So from the time school got, oh, from the time this news got broken to me that, you know what, why don't you join yeah. our club to, uh, getting home and speaking to my parents about it. Right. I was like, uh, Dad, this coach came to school, his name is Surod Khare and he runs a rugby club in Pune. Huh. And he was also shocked. He was like, okay, what about it? He's like, I was like, he's asked me to join. Right. Uh, I don't know if I want to because, you know, it's tackling and huh. all of that. I don't know I don't know if I, I will get hurt or I'll hurt somebody. Yeah. And he's sitting like this with his remote on his stomach. Huh. Like, can you stop talking like a girl? Oh, <laughs> and okay. Go for the practice session whenever he's called you, yeah. but you will join. Right. I was like, okay, fine, dad's given a first signal, <laughs> yeah. which means good. Right. And mom was like, couldn't you find a better game like <laughs> chess? <laughs> you know, or carrom where you sit and you're not gonna get beaten up. Right. And I was just like, Mama. Yeah, mother. <laughs> yeah. They're concerned. Yeah. We'll you, go got, you got spotted because you have the build to, you know. So sir tells me that when I saw your smile is when I knew that you were made for the game. You saw, he saw, he saw your smile. smile. Yeah. Wow, I want to know why. Do you know why he said that? No, no I don't know. So, even when I asked him, I said, Sir, what did you That is very profound. Well, I don't yeah. know. I want I, to know. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> even I don't know the reason behind it, but whenever he spoke to me, he's not told me, yeah. but when he told my mom and another teammate of ours, he said, When I saw Vabi's running down that staircase, smiling, right. I knew she was made for the game. As, I don't know, that's beautiful. I know, and, I don't know. You, and only a coach can spot that. Yes. You can't, yes. not anybody can yeah. do that. And he Spotted said, a rugby player because of a smile. smile. <laughs> that's mad, right? And yeah. uh, so that, that's, and, when he, and that's the time also he said, he's like, you're built for the game. Right. And I assumed he's that's not for my he's side. He's just making that yeah. side. He's just being <laughs> philosophical. Yeah. Still, I was a little skeptical that, you know, tackling, falling, injuries. Right. But... When I started getting to you know the game, the rules, mm. the techniques, yeah. and you know, it's it's not brutal. It's, it's not, not brutal. Yeah, it's, it's not a a war field. Yeah, exactly. Though they explain it to be like that, even in rugby terms, that you know you're going to war, mm. but does not mean you have to get injured. Right. And there are so many laws in the rugby rule book sure. which which protect your spine, which protect your body so much right. that everybody abides to it. Even uh, if you talk about MMA, UFC and stuff, yeah. right? There are rules to make sure that the fighter, the athlete, the, they don't get, you know, severely injured. Because in boxing, you know, it's like 12 rounds. It's like constant punching. Right. It leads to concussions yes. and eventually, you know, Alzheimer's yeah, and yeah, all yeah. that stuff happens. But here, they've got, you know, thinner gloves than boxing. So okay. you get a knockout punch. Knockout is very scary in a yeah, way, right? Yeah. You see person, you know, losing yeah. life in his <laughs> knees and then yeah. falling like a sack of potatoes, right? So you see that, but... Uh, it's safer than you know constant beating right in boxing Correct. yeah so you get one knockout punch you just get knocked out yeah looks scary yeah. but yeah there are rules so i'm sure even in rugby it looks very you know it's kind of a war in a way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, is. Yeah, it is it is and that, that's why i said that i don't want to be in the opposite <laughs> team so if you are coming at me like that i'll be fucking scared i'll be like Side. I'll be good at, you know, turning <laughs> uh, on the balls of my feet, you know, <laughs> doing that rugby thing. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, let's get back to that. Yeah. So, so we joined the sport and something about the sport that really appealed to me was the discipline of the game. Mm. That there's nothing out of line. Right. Uh, whether it be player to player, player to coach, mm. coach to player, player to referee. Mm. In all dimensions, right. it's very respectful. 
sure. with very very a dis- lot of discipline and yeah. you know it's like you don't abide by this and you're off the field hmm. it's like that it's simple yeah and that really really appealed to me and right. which is what took me through till today and touch wood no injuries right. yet right. no injuries at all right. so uh, that's how rugby has happened everything happened very then, organically it's just then you started kicking ass organically <laughs> and that's all. yeah yeah exactly. then the rugby team itself has had a, lo- a long journey right. i mean women's rugby women in sport to start don't know about it and uh, to say people will be very foolish because i didn't know anything about rugby right no, did i see people and you know what i don't think it's right or wise to blame people yeah Ki, no. you do, so hockey people tried it right remember what? a lot of campaigns that you know you should uh, support hockey as well right, right. people don't give a fuck right. they want to like <laughs> yeah. cricket they, yeah. and you know you can't blame them because i think the onus lies on the board the association of the sport Correct. to market the sport properly right. to promote and Absolutely. I, I have another feeling that you know there are of course chess cricket all these sports yeah. India loves cricket yeah. and uh, football is getting there after yeah. years of struggle yeah. now it's getting there it's yeah. not even yeah. there but it's getting there absolutely but i i personally after knowing that i'm going to talk to you right yeah. and then i saw a few videos yeah, yeah. for a week and all, although we've grown up watching movies those are american football movies though yes. you know longest yard and yeah, all yeah. those yeah. aren't rugby rugby no. i think rugby is just invictus i guess yes, right yeah, yeah yeah so uh, all the but or they like cousins right yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah the untrained ies yes yes i'm sure i'm sure because here's a funny thing not funny fascinating part about rugby that you can pass the ball to yourself by kicking it yeah that's that's <laughs> nfl allow that i like but, I, it, but in nfl you can pass the ball ahead yeah here you have to you pass have to pass it behind yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. but i've seen people throwing the ball kicking the ball and then catching it again and running yes that's right <laughs> you yeah. can't do that in american football i, I believe you might be able to but you can't kick an american football that easily it's very you know the it's shape very is very like an egg not even like an egg it's like yeah, pointy pointy yeah. yeah so it's difficult to kick that it's easier to throw that ball long it's crazy because it's uh, the speed is maddening at that time right yeah, people are chasing you and it's you're crazy. kicking the ball and catching it yeah. again that's some skill that's yeah. kind of, they can do that like even these have you done well <laughs> i've tried i'm not very skillful in that but yes it is but, but get, totally get, getting back to that thing that i i think that you know rugby is one of those sports after i watched your videos and i watched rugby and then i watched a few uh, your posts right where you were playing and there was this try that you yeah, yeah. you know right, in, yeah, yeah, yeah in instagram i'm talking right, about your yeah, yeah. oh yes ha huh. very recent so here's the thing people i think fighting fighting i'm just talking fighting yeah. right now fighting is one of the i think the best form of entertainment for people for all <laughs> yes, of course since gladiators right people were fighting and right. they were enjoying and now it's ufc right. safety everything yeah. but we are kicking the shit out of each other yeah. right? so i think that goes on number 1 and all the what do you call them contact sports right yeah they are far more appealing than sports that up personally right. but because yeah. they give you that thrill that something Kya might go, yeah <laughs> they, they, they might crack a skull or yeah, something yeah. you know khoon bahega ya kuch hoga that's the thing that keeps you on the edge so i think rugby in india has a huge potential okay. i'll yeah. be a supporter of it i'll be from now on because i i've started liking the game right yeah and it's so exhilarating right it is it is so i think the onus lies on people like you yes. and the board rather absolutely. than blaming people like no, you absolutely i mean that's what I, when, when we in fact met first and you said that uh this the rugby has so much uh, uh you you should be uh, important and i was like well when we perform we'll be important right. so what a country like ours looks for is a podium finish right or a very or a record huh. or you know something of that sort and when you give the country what it's expecting right they bam but you're already doing that i mean we, i'm i'm still i get awestruck when i'm sitting with people like you right, yeah. yeah because i've heard about the i, I saw the singapore wala yes. that, that was last year 2019 yes, 19, right? yes. and that was just india was it a it was it? three nations it was four nations singapore india singapore india philippines china and you won that right no we came third mm-hmm. in that you came third but yeah. you won the singapore wala match yeah we won the singapore match it's just amazing that you guys are representing and you know still people should fucking know about this more and more no, you see the thing is that uh when you look at it as a oh out of four teams you stood third you know that, it's like that's, that's the thing yeah. but when you look at it as the same team okay the same 15 on each side right. singapore beat us 50-0 the last right. time 
or 55 or whatever oh okay and we beat them 21 19 this time right is like it's and it's in a span of 365 days and it this is 15 we are talking 15, not 7 not 7, not seven. Yeah. so and you always play 15 or no we so because india is very de- was used to be a developing or mm. is still a developing country in rugby right. it's easier to start off with sevens okay and then you know, uh, gather we, attention yeah so after 10 tickets, years yeah. No, no tickets, nothing. But you need that as well. I mean, you yeah, need people to come. But that's yeah. shutting down people even more. Really? Yeah. Because if you have something, an open invite and free and all, more people sure, come. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should put a ticket system to it. It's like, maybe mm, not. Not like now. No, not right now. I mean, you should play yeah. safe in a way. Yeah, right. So, people. so after 10 years of sevens, mm. we've able to we've been able to form a 15s team. Because right. a 15s team needs 26 members on the team. Right, the bench and the yeah. bench and the play. Right. And the reserves. Yeah. Yeah. You list twenty three people mm. on the team list right. and then you have three reserves. Right. So in case any one of these get injured, right. you can't list them on the team mm. list because mm. you can't play them. Right. So one of those three jumps. So that's why twenty six, some teams twenty five, whatever. Right. So it's taken us that many years. Ten years. Yeah, ten years. Ten years. That's what sport is. I mean, yeah, yeah, and that's been the that's actually the success story of women's rugby. We started off with a handful of girls playing rugby, mm-hmm. literally, and it was there were people on the so in the east there is this uh, gentleman called Paul Walsh. Paul Walsh. He has a, a club called Jungle Crows. Okay. And he basically started rugby for the Adivasis. Oh, nice. Yeah, because they they find value in a lot of things, you know, right. and rugby used to be understood to be the club like mm-hmm. the elite clubs of the country play sports like cricket and rugby you yeah, know because yeah. they've come from the british mm-hmm. uh, rule so uh, so that used to be the entire uh, assumption of rugby but so he started rugby for the adivasis okay. on this side surut sir was coaching girls because he was coaching boys he was coaching girls right. and uh, the bandit like beckham phase if you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that brought in a lot of women for football. Okay. So, yeah, I did. I yeah. Did. yeah. So he started football for girls, mm-hmm. and in the rainy season, no better season to play rugby, right? Yeah. So chucked in a rugby ball, and he realized that girls are loving it. Yeah. So that's how coaching in rugby started over here. And the army team, the police team would already be playing rugby, mm. and then the clubs would play rugby. Right. And there's a gentleman in the, in the north called Kuldeep. Okay. Uh, he has a club called Delhi Hurricanes. Okay. He was coaching boys in rugby and girls showed interest. Hmm. So all over the country basically we had enough girls who were playing sevens. Right. And everyone was pushing the union to have a competition. Let hmm. these girls be exposed to it. Have a competition. It should be a proper club type league all over. Correct. And India not like police or no, army no. but states. The yeah. Way, yeah Correct. You know, IPL and stuff. Correct. But there's another <laughs> fascinating concept, though, I mean, they've made it really sexy. LFL, have you, the legend, uh, where in USA, they wear bikinis, but they are like hardcore American football players, okay. but they play in bikinis. They're like, they're, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 I know what it is. <laughs> 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 like, you know, occupation habit, I'm a writer, so I imagine in saying that, you're like, men, I was like, no. <laughs> Foul taste in my mouth. <laughs> no, women, beautiful women, strong as. I've fun. seen it. You've seen it, yes, right? Yeah. But they are hardcore players. Yeah. It's just that they. I don't know whether that's the proper uniform for I American football, but they have proper yeah. like, padding and yeah, like, guard and all. But they're wearing a bikini. But they're wearing a bikini. Yeah. So I was like, maybe they're just doing it, you know, because they want to show hot women out there. Yeah. But no, they are athletes. Yeah. And the strength they have, the yeah. way they collide, it's like trucks colliding. Yeah. I'm not That's lying. true. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not saying like, you know, tell Indian <laughs> people to show in bikini. Sure, yeah. Who knows, man? Who knows? I'm, I'm up for everything, whatever works. <laughs> but the thing is that clubs and this thing should happen. So so, so that's what ended up happening. That, okay. Uh, so then... The union said, ki, okay, you know, there are so many women playing rugby, chalo, we'll hold a national tournament. Right. And from there, they realized that, you know, there's so much potential. Right. And in 2009, that was when women's rugby first time had a national tournament. Right. And uh, there on, uh, the first ever women's sevens team was formed to mm. compete in the Asian continent right. only. So... A lot of things started from then. Yeah. And then there have been many ups and downs 
every sport mm. every team goes through it yeah, yeah. you know we keep we keep actually Partly. we keep uh, talking about football and cricket being high up there in india but i think they've also climbed their way up yeah yes. it's taken so many years for them yeah. to reach where they yeah. are and it's taken the union's trial and error through coaches and players Absolutely. and management to Absolutely. reach this yes point so uh i think it's like you said it's the responsibility of the union plus the players mm. to meet that expectation of your public yeah yeah you know you yes we've done our progress has been great in the last year with both the sevens and the 15s men and women mm. on the asian front right we've we've now you know we've started breaking our way through there right. but and the country has noticed it because right. media has covered it here i'm sitting in front of you people have heard of it right. from somewhere or the other the awareness of rugby has now you know initially when i would say that i play rugby and they're like what is that right today when i'm telling a person that i play rugby they're like wo anda jaisa ball na <laughs> at least they know yeah getting it that, that's the whole point that's the, that's and when i think about it as an athlete initially it used to annoy me that you know people don't even know what i'm playing yeah but you know i'm having fun were you one of those who used to get offended when people compared it to american football not really because doesn't make you sense can't, yeah you, you can't get offended I mean if your country doesn't know the game right. how do you expect them to have a conversation with you about it yeah but i think the journey of these 10 years or the reason of these 10 years or the purpose of these 10 years of rugby's growth mm-hmm. has been to at least make the common man aware of rugby right and it's done its job yeah you know today india is ranking first in asia but you guys are number 1 right now no <laughs> oh. india is ranking first in asia about outreach numbers okay so the grassroots development right, right. that i was speaking to you about india has got close to about a lakh and 80000 oh oh uh, people who have touched the ball right right you know yeah and when you look at it in a that's a massive a, number yeah, yeah it's, it's huge, huge it's huge and we won against big countries like china yeah you yeah. know because they have people they really yeah. have people and so does our country but reaching out to those people is what is it's the, it's it's a challenge yeah exactly yeah. you know children know what the sport is mm. you know we had a huge viewership of the world cup which happened in japan okay. last year there were little, little kids who were coming together and watching the game okay and that's been the whole idea of Hmm. this past decade right now we have created that foundation right right now we move up from yeah. there so everybody in those 10 decades in those in that decade who thought that you know we should have a podium finish hmm. would have been expecting too much because that was really not the idea right if it happened it was a bonus yeah 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 the idea was to get rugby there, india rugby right, get out people, there right, yeah and now, i i started following rugby india you know the, the, because i read that you right, want people yeah. to i did i did immediately i was like yes i'm going to do it so i started <laughs> following that on instagram and facebook as well it has yes. facebook yeah so i want to stay updated at what's happening or what are people how are people kicking butt over there and uh yeah so let's talk about your physiotherapy mm. yeah so is it purely like rugby specific or mm-hmm. like no so i am i hold a bachelor's degree in physiotherapy right. so i treat practically all hmm. conditions uh by all conditions i mean either orthopedic or neurological or referring to the cardio respiratory system right yeah. sure sure I, i mean of course i wouldn't <laughs> be expecting you to <laughs> treat colitis or something like that like that you know we think that you know we have the tools to do everything but no we we uh, it's just really physical um, yeah. uh yeah disabilities or physical problems which are you want to look at it and also i train people right i train people to get fit right uh, getting fit is the goal it's not about okay. weight loss or weight why gain why physiotherapy that's what you're focusing yes, on yes because no, because i have the degree or the knowledge of a physiotherapist mm. training becomes so much more easier for me because i can guarantee zero injury while i'm training yes and you are the proof yeah yeah, yeah. right and in case something happens i'm standing right there i right. can fix it yeah you know so that's uh, that's my what i do as a physiotherapist and you have a concern you mentioned it 
uh, you know in terms of current yeah uh, yeah i mean rage it, it towards is <laughs> running running and yeah so people crossfit uh, i i would consider crossfit as well yes i i didn't want to no 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 tag it <laughs> tag it point blank <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there actually there are many modes of uh exercising out mm. there now right. like initially people used to render to the gym right. because that was the place where you went to exercise but today people are exercising in outdoor spaces uh in bombay in fact you have these uh, tra- uh what are they called uh, there are these bars that are set up uh, on marine uh, marine drive pe wo bana pull ups ke liye yeah, yeah, yeah. i kind of so, like that concept you people are going exactly yeah. so a lot of people are going to these things and right. they are they are uh, you know exploiting these options uh obviously the most known exercise in the world is jogging yeah running so marathoning really picked up hmm. with uh the mumbai marathon the pune right. marathon the uh, pink marathon and pinkathon whatever right. yeah, yeah, so yeah. many many people are now marathoning and yeah. the marathon culture has become great. it it exploded I mean, in the past if you see five, in, six years. yeah if you see in cities like pune bombay bangalore Delhi even. They are running. They are running, man. Strava, running. Strava, everyone yeah. Strava. <laughs> Watch my Strava. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is running, which is a wonderful uh, development in its own form. But right. hey, for a physio like me, that's bread and butter. Yeah, that's like you know meat for you. You're like yeah. yeah. Oh, that means. Yeah. <laughs> Evil doctor. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah. I mean, it's a noble job at the end of the day. I mean, they want to run. They, yeah, they are always yeah. go fuck yourself up. I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the at the end line, I'm there. Yeah. At the finish line, I'm there waiting for you. Yeah. No, but uh, there are there are conscious runners, mm. and then there are just people who are blindly following those conscious runners because they want to have that sense of belonging. You know, in the I, I want to belong in the running wala thing. There are, there are. So, so I never I don't know what the thought behind it is, but everyone wants to be fit. Right. and that's the that's a, it's a beautiful vision to have and i hope everyone has that vision but you don't want to go chasing that vision when you don't know where you are at today mm. we have uh, i mean i come across people who 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 are running already and uh, say 6 months into their running routine you know back is paining yeah. neck is paining mm. and it it would be incorrect for me to say that you know your running style is wrong mm. it's like some people come to me and say oh i have a neck pain pain because i slept wrong I'm like how can you sleep wrong you mm. sleep yeah. <laughs> you know and you, so it's incorrect to say that the running style would be wrong mm-hmm. but there are certain exercises you need to do that will enhance your running uh i can't say style but enhance form, your form, form, form yeah form, your yeah. form Maybe and you you have a weaker side of muscles that doesn't support the other exactly, side. Exactly. Yeah. There's an imbalance, right? So yes, you do exercise and you correct your form. Yeah. Correct. At the end, it's the form. And right? it's been a hundred percent strike when I ask this question to people that do you warm up and they're like, ah. warm up for running. We start running. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, okay, do you cool down? Yeah. Just like. Ah, yeah. I'm like, you're running with your hands or you're running with your legs? <laughs> <laughs> so there's this whole gap between. I am running, mm-hmm. and what do I need to be able to? Run? Here's my take on that, and yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you start. You, you, you know, you are promoting this. That yeah. there's a proper way to it. Yeah. I, what I see nowadays, I know people want to get fit. Yeah. Yeah, but they don't have the knowledge. You know, right now, so they want to train like an athlete. Yes. They don't want to recover like, like an, an athlete. athlete. Yeah. You see, yeah. you see, so they want to look. They want to have that body, or they want to. Have, they want to look like Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> that, that, is, that is practically a demigod. I mean. <laughs> so they if they're not training training yeah. if they, they are recovering yeah. through nutrition and through you know uh, rest rest <laughs> or uh, sauna massage or whatever whatever you know i'll tell you something personal experience my father is 66 right now mm-hmm. so my father was a cop mm-hmm. and he retired at 60 mm-hmm. and then started running uh, like marathons because mm-hmm. that was his passion he wanted to yeah. run i see him he's a he's a senior citizen he just uh, uh, you know won a silver in tata mumbai marathon in his case so category cool. yeah he and he's he's one of those that mujhe karna hai right, right? but i also he's thoda helbent hmm. for sure yeah that's his nature that uh, even if it's uh, yeah exactly <laughs> even if it's hurting right on the competition day i have to run yeah. either i'll fall yeah. and you know taken out by stretchers yeah, or, yeah, yeah. or, or i'm going to run down. or i'm going to run but the thing is that i see him like after he retired and when he started running if he's not running 
he's always one because he's 66 yeah. the age right yeah. and he's always recovering either foam rolling or yeah. massaging yeah. or sun mein baithe yeah, hote yeah. laga yeah, ke yeah, right. and you know nutrition yeah. everything it takes a lot of and yeah. but people nowadays office going people yeah. you should know that you can't do that, that much yeah. without recovering right Absolutely. so you need people like you who tell yeah. them that okay listen you idiot sit down <laughs> this is what we have to do yeah yeah so how how are your clients like do you meet stupid clients that expect all those who expect so much uh so i have met people in general who like you said right who want to be like a certain person right but they don't know the journey that that person mm-hmm. has gone through yeah you know even when we when i when i train people or when i when i'm just say when i'm going from the parking to the training spot right. there are a lot of people who are looking at me walk past hmm and with my general build and my personality when i walk into a space there are people who are turning around and looking right and a lot of people come around and say that you know we want to look like you yeah and i'm like guys i'm 26 yeah but it's taken me close to about 16 years to get to this build this yeah physically mentally emotionally you need to be in in line it has to all be in tandem mm. you can't just tomorrow go and lift the weight that i'm lifting or go and run the distances that i'm this running or right. clock the time that i'm clocking you know it's it takes it's a journey it's yeah. not an overnight process i mean now that you mentioned it crossfit mm. right the concept of crossfit came from people who had been doing this for years together right. Right. and then finally they're able to you know whatever do a snatch 100 snatches with say whatever 50 kilos because they have to de- develop the skill it's not about the strength at the end of the day the idea behind crossfit the the fitness behind it is great but any any sport any activity any mm. physically demanding activity requires a skill right that skill is developed over years and years of constant Trial and practice practice yeah you know it's uh, uh, i i don't remember which movie it is but it's basically showing bruce lee when he was young okay uh i think it is that uh, It's not a Bruce Lee movie. It's no, about it's Bruce. about when Bruce Lee was a child, okay. and it's a snippet. Okay. So Bruce Lee is going to this coach basically, okay. and uh, he's like, "Why are you teaching me the same thing every day?" Uh, Or even in karate, karate like this yeah, show, yeah, 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 you know. Why am I yeah, you know, painting? <laughs> why am I painting? Cleaning. Why am I doing this? Yeah. And the new one, why am I removing yes, my T-shirt and yes. putting it down? Bullshit. Right. But it's that continuous movement of the same thing. Yeah. That will. make you pro at it mm. and that coach says something so beautiful he says that i will not be afraid of you if you've done if practiced 100 move 100 moves that okay, yeah i know you're talking about the bruce lee part right yes. yeah, yeah, yeah he said i'm not i will not be afraid of you if you have practiced 100 moves in one session mm. i will be afraid of you if you've practiced one move 100 times yeah he was talking about kicks so if you yeah. i guess it's I, i know i know i know this is i i caught on to that line right, and right. i was just like that makes so much sense yes that we chase trying to do this 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 this, this just do one thing and yeah. be best at best it best at it yeah so it can be anything now now taking crossfitting for example or taking powerlifting now that's mm. the new thing right. like we want to do powerlifting yeah. right <laughs> I, i so the previous guest no isse pehle so yeah. uh, rehan se pehle the, he's a powerlifting champion mm. the guy i got these guys are into it properly yeah. it's not for everyone like it you know, i want to be a powerful yeah no yeah. and i i i interact with people who are working in the fitness industry and they're like we have all age category people coming to us and saying we want to learn how to power lift hmm. why because one video of a, a virat kohli or one video of a cristiano ronaldo doing a snatch hmm. you know what it takes to do that snatch <laughs> yeah. you know you'll and then you'll have people who will teach you the right technique you'll right. have people who will teach you the right form mm. you'll have people who will make you start from shadow moving mm. but there will also be those rot- rotten apples in the business that will throw exactly what virat kohli is taking yeah. and make you feel awesome about yeah. yourself from day one and second day you're lying on the bed yeah. now that's where i step into the picture yeah. yeah. okay so i'm concerned about this mm. and mm. it's it is a huge concern for yes anybody who is looking at right. fitness uh and to be fit and what a uh, conversation i had with my uncle recently is yes people know that okay i want to look like xyz person mm. but people don't know where they are today yeah people think that yeah i can just start tomorrow and in let's give myself 3 months 3 months yeah 3 <laughs> months is like 3 yeah. months 6 months 9 yeah. months 12 months yeah. that's it and 
then you have these success stories on YouTube mm. and end the number of them. You just right. put success story, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> as somebody went from 120 kilos to 50 yeah. kilos and you're like, I can totally do this in yes. 12 months. Chalo, go on this diet, that diet. Mm. And you're just making a mess of yourself. Mm. You don't know where you are today. How do you know you want to be that? Right. I think people need to be aware of where I am today. Yeah. How I am today. Mm. What cap- capabilities I have today. Yeah. And then move ahead with that one step. Right. You don't know you're at A. How you know you're going to go to C? Hmm. What's your take on deadlifts? Because I heard this podcast and, you know, he was saying an ex-American football player, mm-hmm. but now a uh, strongman competitor, you know, strong man, they, they lift huge yeah, 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 tires, yeah, yeah. basically yeah. powerlifting, yeah. but lifting right. massive, mad amount, insane amount of weights, yes, right? Yes, yes. Like they're, they're lifting 400 kilos, yes. like 800 pounds, yeah. something like that. Yeah. So he said that uh, because your training requires a lot of explosive thing in rugby, right? Myself, yes, yeah, 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 in rugby it does. So in that sport, uh, he was saying that deadlift, the reward to risk ratio, the risk to reward ratio in deadlift is fucked up because you know you tend to get injured more if you're doing. And people in NFL and all that stuff, yeah. they are just doing power snatch and hang yeah, snatch. Yeah. They're not doing deadlifts because in deadlifts you get to, you tend to get injured. Right. Uh, there was know, a lot of controversy over there. Yeah. But because, you know, some people say that, you know. So now, now, okay, let's look at, say if we're looking at injury. Right. Okay, we're looking at injury as a bubble. Hmm. Okay. The bubble will only pop when you prick it. Right. Otherwise, hmm. it will keep floating. Hmm. Right. Right. And that's the same thing about you getting injured, right? right. If you're doing something in moderation, hmm. okay, for, forget all of this. Let's say I pick you out today from whatever degree Celsius we're at today right. and I throw you into extremes. Extremes. Yeah. I throw you into the North Pole. Yeah. You'll freeze. I'll you die. will you'll die. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Your body won't be able to take that yes. sudden change. Right. But now I've taken you slowly, 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 mm-hmm. slowly. You spend ten days here, then ten days little in colder climate. Then I take you to Himachal. Mm-hmm. That's the coldest what we yeah. are at. Then we go to uh, we go to uh, the Himalayas. Right. Little above 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 slowly slowly slowly. slowly reach the North Pole. Right. Now you'll be acclimatized, you'll at least survive for a few days. Hmm. You won't die. Right. And then, same thing about coming back to this. Yeah. So, it's about getting your body used to something. Right. Now, these people who are deadlifting with X amount of weight, you should have started from zero. Yeah. Yeah. You should have started from nothing. Yeah. And then slowly, slowly develop with 10, 10 kgs. Right. It takes time. It's not easy. I mean, I was. But, but we are talking trained athletes who are talking like this. That the risk to reward ratio is, and NFL players don't do that. You'll that. be surprised, Abhimanyu. You, I, I interact with co-athletes, fellow uh-huh. athletes, uh, a lot of days of the week. Right. Very few, and I, actually, I'll say majority can't do a push-up. I I've seen that. They can't do a push-up. Athletes, they, athletes. They, they, especially they tell. Uh, this is another factor part that they tell girls to put their knees, knees down. down. It's like, you know, I, why? I know people who say that they're girly push-ups and it is so wrong. Why? If you, even if you can just, I, I, whenever I see, so in the gym, I don't want to come across as that stupid cocky guy who tells you, okay, you're not doing it. Yeah, yeah. But I have this impulse to tell them that, listen, lady, don't put your knees down. Yeah. Go, do one. Yeah. And go home happy. Do one. Exactly. exactly. But don't put your knees down. That's not a push-up. That's, <laughs> I don't know. I, mean, I don't want to say it, but that's stupid. It's, it's odd. Yeah. And, it's not wrong. Right. The knees down push up is not wrong. Uh-huh. But if a person is able to do it on their feet, right. why are you putting them on their knees? Yeah. Yes, use it as a mode to develop. If mm. somebody has never done push ups in their life, yes, you want to show them what the actual thing is. And then you want to take them progressively to their feet. Right. Putting them on the knees, but not shunning it down like, oh, you're a girl, you do it on the knees. Yeah, no, not even that. Not even, no progression. <laughs> Straight away on the toes. I'll be the hammer on that. Be, <laughs> no. <laughs> no right way. Don't do one. Fall down. Right. Like, yeah. Correct. I completely agree with you. And it's, it's about, uh, even in athletes, I would say that, like I said, very few know how to do a proper push-up. Mm-hmm. Very few can hold a plank. Yeah. And these are basics that you will expect an athlete to have because you're, uh, the, you're, and not only an athlete, but in everybody, your basic strength should lie in your core. Yes. And if your core is, and by core, I don't mean doing a hundred crunches. Right, right, right. Yeah, you have to 
fire your entire lower back your oblique, everything under everything. your everything between your ribs and your hip right 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 your entire yeah low back area yes yes and if that is strong your right <coughs> yeah awesome oh that yeah, was yeah a lot of information out there yeah yeah what is anything that you want to share like you know whatever some message we usually i mean you you've said everything that you felt like but anything anything to you know people girls i don't i didn't want this to come across as you know uh, you breaking barriers yeah, i never, yeah. because i never <laughs> felt that i never felt right. that it's awesome to meet awesome people yeah. and people are fucked up a yeah. girl can be as fucked up as a guy yeah. the sports bad good bad of course yeah i know there was a time when girls were struggling in sports mm. whatever blah 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 now is not the time anymore yeah. i don't think it so. isn't i know i have it you isn't. in front of me yeah. right now. i don't i don't care so i don't talk to general to you know janta to just you know something to for sports like your take on it so i and sports as a career as well yeah i really want to talk about that like, because it's hard you yeah. know you know so you pe- people like you work their asses off for that one, one moment of glory yeah, right in yeah. sports that gives you shivers yeah, yeah, that, of yeah, course. You, know, you know yeah so i'll give you a personal story on this and i i hope it it uh, makes sense to people uh yes i come from a well to do background mm. uh, i've never had to think about my next meal mm. but i've had my own challenges right okay and my own challenges have been complacency mm. laziness mm. uh always being on the heavier side mm. these have been my challenges and it's even more difficult when it's a personal challenge right right an external challenge you can still like shun off right yeah and you know be like i don't want to pay attention to this right. but a personal challenge takes a lot to break right uh through the journey i have been like most of my fellow athletes and you've also heard it that sports is a hobby mm. do it as a hobby enjoy it let it go focus on your work right and uh, there was this like i said right from since childhood it was routine mm. mainly routine hai right. ki let's say tomorrow even today if you tell me that okay abhi you know uh, the indian rugby team is not going to participate anymore mm. or you're not going to be on it anymore but you continue playing your rugby i'll be happy to right because i do for the fun of it right okay this does not mean that i can afford to mm. and this does not mean that i am not passionate enough mm. i enjoy what i am doing mm. now that has been the crux of everything right. i have always enjoyed playing right and that has taken me has taken me from being a girl to a woman mm. i like i said i started let's say i started playing very seriously at the age of 13 right yeah at the age of 13 and adolescence turning from uh, your whole uh, the menstrual cycle right the whole everything all those hormonal fluctuations the hormonal everything hormonal. yeah kya ho raha hai yahan pe exactly <laughs> and then you have the whole 11th 12th funda happening right and then you get into a more serious setup of mm. getting into your career oriented right, right. so everything happened okay mm. i went through the whole system but i always knew that i wanted to be involved in sport right okay and specifically to the playing side of it right right i did whatever it took mm. it took hell out of me yeah sure. which meant i had to wake up and go for 6 to 7 practice right. be at college by 9 o'clock always be late and be there by 9:15 9:20 9:20 get shouted at but sit for these 8 hours of college and then go back home possibly practice again do the studies whatever mm. whatever i work my way out of it right. it has taken a lot of patience a lot of um failures a lot of falling uh, i failed a, a year in my physiotherapy uh-huh. i uh, <laughs> yeah well <laughs> i failed a year in my physiotherapy um uh, i on one of the teams in 2016 i was dropped from the team right. because of my fitness and i've had that whole cycle right at the end of the day it's the patience and the persistence that will carry you through hmm. i i promise you abhimanyu i have traveled in non reserved 
train seats ah oh, where you sit and go so i i i i, I, I was a tt player right yeah. so um, whenever we used to go out jammu se rep to rep train je kabhi kabhi tickets reserve nahi hoti yeah. waiting baithna padta tha so yeah done that. so i have sat you know those those general compartments yeah. where the metal ka ye hai upar the sleeper se bhi ek niche hota hai where yeah, there aren't yeah. any beds most no, of the time no. you just have to sit I and there's no the reserved the seat so if you get up someone else yeah. yes yeah. so i have traveled in that class as well as i have traveled in a business class right right i have seen everything in that right okay i have i literally i have gone from everything in that i have been i have i, I promise you when i was traveling for those those handball district tournaments there was this old gentleman who i still remember it like it happened yesterday and i was i was sitting beside him all cramped up and he mm. was lying down because he had that space right and uh, i was i was dozing off and he noticed me yeah. so he's like uh, beta tum so ja <laughs> little did i know he wanted to touch me <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so creepy old fuck <laughs> very creepy very old very very fuck <laughs> so i'm lying on and i'm like really somebody's touching me i'm like i'm just being touched i'm like i'm like i'm like i'm like this man is like really touching me okay and i'm like you know bus i'm done with this i don't want to sleep anymore whatever it was an experience in itself right. and i have been in this huge seat by myself where nobody is even like around me right you know when i was sitting in that seat i was just thinking about it that how have i reached here you know what yeah. you know you sometimes get into that that kaise hua kya hua kaise hua kal ye ho raha hai aaj ye ho raha hai kya hua kya hua beautiful that thing. and it's 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 such a beautiful flashback right you know and you i was making the most of that moment hmm. you know that i was there with my legs stretched out in front of me yeah. and i was just i was looking at my feet and i was like man i can see my feet they are yeah. cramped up behind me be happy <laughs> <laughs> and when i think about it i'm just like you know it has taken me 15 years hmm. 15 years to get to this spot okay. it has not been overnight yeah and that's what i want to tell every parent every child out there that you will sport is an investment in itself mm. a personal investment mm. you will have to give up a lot of things yes. right i've i've had the late nights but then i've had to be there for practice which means i gave up on a lot of rest time a lot of sleep right if i didn't if i wanted to be at that practice i had to give up that late night yeah which happened a lot of times mm. sometimes you have to choose right and if you want to do something damn badly and if you have that kida in you yeah you will get there yeah you have to drop something yeah, then right. either it is your spot that you have to drop right. or you have to drop that distraction agreed in my case i always chose the spot right that bhai 6 o'clock training pe jana hai jana hai yes. whether i take a nap on my bike ah. i'm fine with that right. but i have to be there at 6 o'clock yes. and give my 100% and i think if every person who even has the slightest thought that you know mujhe ye karna hai you know and i really really want to do it yeah and they can then just you know grow like a bud yeah little by little little by little by some sun some water sometimes you don't get water so you have to use whatever is in the ground yes sometimes you have to sustain you have to survive yes and when you're able to get out of that you're able to cross that barrier now yeah it's just on autopilot today so weak it's it's on autopilot and other one you will also you might also realize it with what you're doing right with interview it's it's taken you time to get here right it's taken a lot of brainstorming a lot of it but you stuck to your yes decision you yes. stuck to your plan and you're here today yeah. you're interacting with people who have achieved it yes. and that is your stepping up that Absolutely. ladder you might have people who are chopping your ladder down but you're still climbing up yeah and and that's the beauty of it because you are sticking to your plan right there will always be people who will pull you down verbally physically yeah. in every way possible and try to distract you out of it right but when you're in that zone you are there yes and that's what i want to tell every parent every child every person who wants to do something great in sport you yeah. can make sport a career yeah you totally can make it a career trust me today i have traveled close to about 15 countries at no cost of my own mm, yeah it's all been the sport yeah you earned it today i am a physiotherapist because of my sport yes i got my uh, admission in science mm. because of that 5% extra that the government gave me because yes. i played nationals yeah, yeah 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 it's it's all worked out beautifully i i got invited to 
go to Japan to watch the World Cup. As the, the World Cup as a yes, guest, as a as an Indian ambassador. Oh, nice! Because of the sport. Now, when I think about it, you know, sometimes I'm damn hard on myself. That's a very wrong thing to say, but I'm damn hard on myself. All goes. <laughs> that I think you know that yeah maybe I'm I'm the only one. Huh. You know, sometimes I think like that. Ki, Are, who else will they send? Right. There's a whole list of people that they can send. Yeah, sure, and I'm sure. In today's day and age, you don't look at language mm. because I was interacting with people who were speaking only Japanese. Yeah, Korean. How 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 did you how did it, how, <laughs> how did it go? Arigato <laughs> gozaimasu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of anime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, but you learn the language by learning. Sure, sure, sure. And people really, I think, have left behind language a long way. Yes. And it's more about interacting with somebody who's reached somewhere in their life. Hmm. And even if we're speaking in English, they have their translators. Yeah. Basically, language can be walked around. Right. So you, so I can't even think that you know maybe because I'm English speaking. Hmm. We have girls who can't speak English but can communicate beautifully and yes. can put that message across beautifully. But no, there is a reason why I am there. Hmm. There's a reason why they choose me to go. Yeah. And it's because I've earned it. Yeah. It's because I have. Really put sweat and blood together. Yes. To be there, mm. and there are those days. I promise you, Abhimanyu, I feel it when I am. I'm like, bus. You know, I I don't want to do this anymore. But then there's just, it would. That's your design, right? Yeah. yeah. It's, because yeah. It's a routine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> What else will you do? I mean, yeah, life will throw shit at you, yeah, right? It does. But at, but at the end, you get that second wind, right? Yeah. You want to do that, yeah? yeah. Or kya karunga? I'm good at it. Right? Exactly. Exactly, and that's the reason why I wake up every day to it, right. and I do it. Yeah. And I, I think every every person who is looking at sport as a career. I think they're recording. Do you want to look at that guy and say hello? I don't know. <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Anyone who is uh, looking at sport as a career, it is very, very, very possible. Uh-huh. But it is as difficult as getting a regular job today. Right. 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 You have to prove yourself out there. Yes. It, Forget sport. Chalo, we are taking sport and we are looking at it seriously. You look at any option. Mm. You want to be a photographer. You want to be. I was speaking at a college that day. You want to be a truck driver. Yeah. You have to bloody prove yourself. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. You can't get pissed drunk and drop the truck and all the goods in the valley. But that's what they do. <laughs> you have to qualify to be a truck driver yeah. at the end of the day. You have to. I think you, <laughs> you have to prove it to them that I can take this amount of opium yeah. or. <laughs> <laughs> Still drive Still and deliver the goods. And yeah. deliver the goods in time. Yes. Each and everything of it takes a lot of commitment. It's a process. Yes. It's a process. Yes. And I I came across this beautiful image. Uh, it was just one small picture where there is this juggler. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen the picture yourself. So there's this gentleman. He's juggling on a stage right. some ten plates. Okay. Okay. And it's 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 just a picture with ten right. plates flying, and he's flinging it. Uh-huh. And it says on the top, "Nobody knows your journey." Right. And there are stairs up to that stage where right. there are all plates broken. Oh, it's fantastic! <laughs> yeah. It's such a beautiful creative. Right. And I'm just like, my God, I really, really, you know, I relate to this yes. because people think that. People message me, Didi Muja India Kele Khel Dana. Hey, bye. Hello, I guess. Hello, I guess. You know, and some people are not built for it. Yes. Some people aren't built to give it. And then you have to respect that. Mm. And then maybe you're just, you know, you're, you're built for something else. Did you text back that you're a guy who's a snack guy? Virat Kohli ke wait. Then you get me. You get me. You get me. No, I I keep telling these people. I'm like, it's not easy. Yeah. It's very simple to say I want to play for mm-hmm. India, and it's and it's very simple to assume that it's easy to hold that responsibility on your shoulders. But it's it's not a piece of cake. Right. When you, when are you playing next? Like when are you representing again? Like tournament? Uh, as of now, season's off. But uh, end April, May is end when I yeah. So uh, that that's your like. Uh, are you going somewhere? Is it a tournament? So first or? we will have a nationals. Right. And then we will move up the ladder. Selection. So is it is it like you have to prove every single time? Like yeah. every single time nationals, you have to go through that. Yes. Isn't there an already established Indian team? No, not yet because it's not uh, for retention of players mm. or to claim that these are the players right. of the Indian team. There has to be a certain stipend in place. Right. Which is not there. Yeah. So every year, every player has to go through 
that selection process. Part of the Obviously, I mean, yeah, I mean, and that's beautiful because you have to keep working hard. Right, right. You know, then there is no complacency. Yes. And that's exactly what happened with me in 2016. Okay. Uh, I started. Uh, you know, there's this in, throughout sport in the country. It's are you to already India ke liye khelte hai? Yeah. To selectly hone wale hai. People have that right. misunderstanding, but when I didn't, uh, when I was not great on my fitness uh-huh. results in that particular camp, I was dropped. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Because you can't carry an unfit yes. team, yes. Uh, unfit player onto a, 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 a yeah. good team. Yeah. As uh, good as losing, right? As good as losing. <laughs> and yes, how much? Of, and that time, you know, I was very angry. Grapes were sour, and I was just like, you know what? But I have skill. I have experience. Mm. But you know what? No, you're not fit. Yeah. Boom. That's it. Mm. And that. When you know dropping me from the team, I think was the most sensible decision because every player then onwards, so all the seniors took yeah. it so seriously because yes. they were like, "Bobby didi team pe nahi hai." Uh, it was just like hanging on your head, right? You have yeah, to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you know sometimes there is this. You know, it's like when Sachin Tendulkar gets out on zero. Yeah. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not rating myself that high. But sometimes when he gets out, when he gets out on a zero, you're just like, "Gay Indian team." Uh, you know, even though there are. Absolutely capable players out right, there, right, and you right. have completely gold mines out there. Right. But still, everybody is like such an out again. Mm. Chal, stadium chhod ke jaate. Right. That's a similar thing what happened here, and that's been the journey for the entire women's team actually, where everybody realized that you know what, this team can run without X Y Z players. Yeah, it's a team at the it's end. It's a team at the end of the day, yeah. and that's life. That yeah. is sport. One drops, there's automatically a refill. Yes. Two drop, refill. Yeah. So it's not like everything is dependent mm. upon you, and that was a game changer right. for everybody. Yeah. It was a game changer for the full team. The next year in the next tournament, we were people. Everybody was on the senior side, was a bit faster, a yeah. bit fitter, a yeah. bit stronger, yeah. a bit more enduring. So there was this whole change in the yes. how the team looked. Right. So that that complacency right. goes away when you have a reselection every time. Right. Pretty awesome. I wish you all the luck for your nationals next year. I will keep there. you in touch. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm now. I'm going to follow. I'm yes. going to follow this match. I'm going to tell my friends that I'm going to see them, right? because I know strong girls who are athletic. They should watch that. Oh yeah. It was amazing, Dr. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much.